Hi everyone, here is Damien Levy. Welcome in this Forex Professional Trader video. Today, we will learn how to define the trend using only price action. Then, we will learn how to place the Fibonacci expansion to set our target profit. Then, I will teach you how to place your trade with a pending order, splitting your trade to have two different target profits and also how to move then your stop loss to reduce your risk. Hi everyone and welcome in this uh, Forex webinar where I will teach you a complete price action strategy. Good morning or afternoon everyone. This is a webinar about Forex. Uh, the last webinar we made was to explain the basis of, both the, of Forex with uh, target profit, stop loss, how to place them and what is the principle of Forex. Now we will go a little deeper and I will explain you and teach you a complete strategy uh, from from scratch for you to be able to, to follow the trend and to trade Forex uh, on the long run. First, this strategy is made for one hour chart and more, like maybe four hour chart, daily chart, etc, etc. The first thing that we will learn is to place correctly the support and resistance. So this is my MetaTrader 4. But if you trade Forex, most likely you will use MetaTrader. At the bottom of my chart, this is the volume. Uh, for me, it's something useful that tells you how many how many people buy and sell at a specific uh, for a specific candle. So it's a useful tool. Forex is a little more long term than binary option and I will teach you a strategy that permits you to place a pending order. So a pending order is an order that we will, that will be placed automatically uh, at a specific price that you will define before. So it means you will be able to analyze the market in the morning and after you place your pending order and you just shut down your computer and during the day your order will be placed automatically with the MT4 and the broker you are connected uh, with. <clears throat> we will trade the one hour chart. So the goal is to catch the big movement like this one for example. And first thing we will do is to plot our support and resistance and to do so we will go on daily chart. So, for example, I take the USDGPY for this specific example. And the first thing is to plot your support and resistance a very strong level at the top and the bottom. So my blue line will be my resistance at this specific point. And to explain you a little more how we plot it correctly, we have different ways to do and each way will attract a specific number of traders. First things to know about support and resistance. They are like a sailing and a floor where will bounce like a bouncing ball the price from the, the top to the bottom and so on and so forth. 70% of the time the price is not moving anywhere. It is ranging. So we expect to keep the movement of a trend that will make significant movement and that will attract a lot of profit for us. And to do so we will like uh, create a map on our chart and the map will be defined by a floor and a sailing. Let me draw you something. As I said, 70% of the time the price will stay in a range. So my two blue line here will be a range. And the price 70% of the time will go up, down, up, down, up, down and then it will break and when it breaks what happens? It will find a new resistance, a new sailing here for example and this resistance here will become the new support and the price will continue to do the same most likely. It's statistic, you know, so 70% of the time the price really do something like that. What we want to take is big movement, if we can, from this part until this part. But it represents only 30% of the time. So the rest of the time what we do with support and resistance is we place our resistance here for the daily chart, we place our support here, 
always in the daily chart and we wait for the price to go near here and when the bounce is confirmed we enter the trade in the downside direction expecting for the price to continue little by little to go until the floor which is our support this is what kind of movement we will try to catch with this strategy and first using support and resistance and after when it's at a support and we see for example a confirmation of a bounce we will want to enter again going up for a call in the forex strategy expecting the price to continue to go little by little touching our resistance this is ideally in textbook the example this is the first step plotting your support your floor plotting your resistance your selling on a daily chart to have a maximum of impact into the one hour chart where you will trade so the selling will be the resistance and the floor will be the support so to plot it correctly as you can see i have a candlestick chart and i will plot my line at the end of the body and where i have a lot of touch i will not go below the end of the body like that i will just go at the end exactly at the body another way to plot it can be to sh to find the extreme and since we know a resistance and support are a zone we can place every time two lines like that so this will be our resistance zone and now we will search for a support once we have fixed this one we will search for a possible area where we know the price should bounce and you know that support transform into resistance and uh, resistance transform into support when it's broken for example let's take uh, yeah, this line exactly here so I will zoom in a little so this is I place two lines as you can see because I know it's a zone so I place my line at the end of the body of this candle for example and the end of the body of the candle on the top so what you can see is at first let's say we start from this point exactly so the price break up and when it breaks up our resistance zone here become a support right here so it means the price when it will come back to it it will bounce and come back up in this direction so one time, two time, it comes back to this place and it bounces up again. And after it cross our support, that becomes now a new resistance. So we assume that most of the time when the price comes back to this zone, it will react as a resistance because now the price is below the support that become a new resistance right now. And what happened is the price bounce one time and it bounces two times here and even maybe three let me see yeah i will plot this one it will be easier it will follow the price so as you can see the price bounce again here again here and so forth so on so forth so this is a good support that become a resistance and now the price is above this line so we expect when the price will come back to this line we expect the price to bounce up so when the price will come back here we expect the price to bounce up and when the price will go up at the resistance we will expect also that it will bounce down because knowing that 70 percent of the time the price stay in a range like that we will assume that we have quite good probability that the price will stay in this kind of range so this is the first thing you do is you plot your support and resistance correctly and inside this range you assume that the price will go from the bottom to the top and to the top to, from the top to the bottom now i will teach you some fundamentals on how to analyze the price action 
to see if there is weakness or strength going in one direction or going to another. Because in this strategy, we also want to be able to trade according to the strength and against the weakness of the market. The strength of the movement. So this is a, a basic price action. How you can see that is we will analyze the movement of the price and they will tell you if they are strong enough to break this level or not. So the first element of price action analysis is the analyze of the angles. It might seem a little simple, but uh, it's very efficient. So how do you find the angle of a specific movement? First, you have to find the last top and the last bottom of the movement. So for example, so the first thing, to define a top, we need to have one candle in one direction, so going up, for example, here, this one, and after we need to have three or two, at least two, it's already good, candle in the opposite direction in the downside. So you have one here going up and after you have one here going down and second here going down. This will define the last stop and the bottom is the same. You need to have one candle going down followed by two candles going up to define a new bottom. And you have one here and one here nearly the same. So we'll assume this is the last movement. So when you have the last movement you will draw a line from the extreme top to the extreme bottom right right here. This is the first step. After, you will compare the movement in the same direction. So going down, last top, last bottom, not specifically the last, but the movement going in the downside direction. And this one here. This is how you will place your line to find the angle of each movement going down. Let's return at our drawing. So the way we will analyze the angle will be this way. What the market will tell you is if there is a specific strain going in one direction or not. So if the first movement going down has an angle like that, and the second movement going down has an angle like that. And the third movement going down has an angle like that. And the last movement going down has an angle like that. We can see clearly, first it's very steep, then it becomes less steep and less steep and nearly horizontal and after what the price do is likely it go in the opposite direction with more strength. So when we see a weakness in the angles in one direction like that, we want to trade against this weakness. If we see this strength here for this movement and the second, we don't trade here because we don't see any weakness yet. But when we see the weakness here, we take the trade at this level. This is the first about angle analysis. Then we will look at the, so this was a genuine movement, we are in downtrend, and now we look at the pullback. This is my price action, I mean my total price action, it's a line chart, so this is a textbook. And now, going down, and now, going down, here it is. So when we analyze the angle of the pullback, we will get this first pullback here. Not very steep. This pullback here, not very steep, but a little steeper than the previous one. And this pullback here, way steeper than the previous one. So this is a sign of strength going in one direction. So when we have the sign of weakness going down, movement less steep, less steep, less steep here, more horizontal, so we, are, we find the weakness going down with the genuine movement and what we see is a strength taking place in the opposite direction and this is where you, we want to take a trade going up. 
because it is confirmed by the angle of each movement. Then comes the length of the movement. This is the second step of price action. And we analyze the same way. So first we have big movement going down, then little pullback, and after we have a lesser big movement going down, little bigger pullback, and then we have a lower. So the length of this movement we will compare the movement still going in the same direction. So this is our first movement, this will be our second movement. Additional to the angle, and this is the last movement, which is way little than the previous one. So this is how we compare the length of movement 1, movement 2, and movement 3 here. And when we see the movement become more little, more little, more little, if in the other direction we see a, a bigger movement, I mean the pullback here, start here, with very little value, and after here, more well, same value, but if we have a confirmation of the last one, way bigger than the two previous one, additional to the length of the three movement going down, we have an increase of the length of the pullback, which become a genuine movement going up. This is also a confirmation that we are, if we go for a call at this specific moment, and when this is confirmed, we are with the strength of the market and not against it. And we are against the weakness of the movement going down. So this is how you analyze the length. After the length, goes the depth of each movement. And now we will analyze the difference between the previous low and the distance that the price has been able to achieve. So we'll take this level, this level, this level, and this level. And we will compare the distance that the price was able to make between the two, two low. So this is a quite good distance healthy sign of a, of a downtrend, then we have this level and we compare to the previous one, so we have only, so now the distance that the price is able to make is more little than in the previous one, in this level, and this is very little compared to the previous one, and after we have no difference at all between the two new low, so no more depth in this movement. And what happened after we will analyze the movement on the upside, the previous high, and we will compare it again. And what we can see is, at first, we have a good difference here, healthy, trend going down, same as this one, so this one are correlated, we can assume that it continue to go down. After it continue to go down so a little, and now we have a very significant difference between the previous distance that the price has been able to make and the new distance the price is able to make. So this distance is not very a good sign for the price to go in the downside direction. And what happened next is the price doesn't succeed to go down and to create a new low lower than the previous one, but it goes up and it creates now a higher high. And the distance is quite similar to the previous one. So this tells us there is weakness going down and there is strength again going in the upside direction at this specific moment. And now we will analyze the acceleration and deceleration. Once again I draw here to make you able to understand a little more easily. And we will go just later on in the chart to, to see a real example of it. An acceleration of the price is the price will start with with little candle, with weeks upside and downside and little by little you will see bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger candle. This is what we call an acceleration.
of the price. And what is not good with that is if you have a resistance level where you want to take your trade and the price is in the middle of the acceleration, it's not very likely that it will stop. So this is how you will use it. But if your resistance hit at the extreme, I mean the price already made a strong acceleration and now it's nearly vertical. When it's nearly vertical, it is what we call a climax. And when it's at the climax uh, fast movement, likely it will reverse. So if you have your resistance line at this exact level and you see the climax, the price goes so much, so much high, it can't be sustained and it will face order flows that will make it go down. You can take your trade at this level. This is uh, the use of the acceleration and deceleration. So now we see the acceleration. Let's look at the deceleration. So deceleration, it is the same principle. The price start to go up very strongly and little by little you will see candle become little more little more little more little more little more little and same example if you have your resistance and you expect to make a put here you will lose your trade because you are in the middle of the process of deceleration but if you are if you are, for example, a resistance right here and the price already decelerated here, likely it will go here and create a test of this resistance zone and it will bounce. Because you already see a deceleration process and you see the price is uh, weakened by this deceleration. So most likely it will test the resistance and bounce back in the opposite direction. Creating for you, if you want, if you wait exactly at this level to take the trade, a good sign for your trade. Likely the price will go in the opposite direction. So this is the way the deceleration process works. So if you see a price like that, you don't go in the middle, you wait for the price to be very very steep and now you go here to expect a bounce down. And if you see an acceleration going up, you don't take your trade in the middle of the acceleration, you wait the price to decelerate and you will take it when it will test because likely this will be your entry point to make a put and a winning trade. That's how we analyze acceleration and deceleration process. Now let's look at the live example on the chart. So as you can see this movement was quite steep and after there is a little deceleration here and it attack but after it has been broken and come back with weakness and now there is a bigger movement here than the previous movement going down so it seems it means the resistance did hold pretty well and we expect the price to continue in the same direction first angle is this way we take the bottom with two candles going up and this will be uh, our our point where we will measure the angle you will search your bottom and your top first and you will place a line from the bottom to the top this is the first one so after this is our new bottom and our top for example let's say this one so you will position your line in this way and analyzing the angle what you can see for example this is the first sign we see an angle that is quite horizontal and uh, quite long also and likely the price go down it's it is a sign of of weakness when you see the next angle very steep like this one this is a sign that the market gains trend going in the upside direction in this angle we see the price is quite horizontal going up and has not very very much trend going up so likely the price go down after and that's exactly what happened and after the new angle going up is steeper and now we see very big blue candle which which means the price is likely to go up from now on now here is a new movement going up steeper 
this moment quite steeper and after here is it so in this movement we can see it was less steep at this one after it become more steep but this one is quite little compared to the previous one so when you analyze the length also the length is important if the movement has not the capacity to go uh, stronger in one direction than the previous movement it's a sign of weakness so this one is weaker than the previous one here and after we have something that is quite horizontal and this is not a good sign to say to us that the price is likely to go up but then just after what happened is a very steep movement going up that breaks the previous high and this element is quite important for us so this is the angle analysis will tell you if the price is likely to continue in one direction or if it's likely to go in the opposite direction it's a sign of weakness in trading we trade with the weakness so it means when we have a big movement let's say for example we want to take a downside trade here we have a very strong movement here so we will not enter here because we have a very very strong movement going up and it's not likely it will reverse in the opposite direction but when we have this retracement and this little with this big rejection here and now it breaks the previous low right here and continue down now it is a sign that most likely it will continue to go in the downside direction because it has broken this previous low here so we don't talk about single candlestick we talk about the movement because the movement will give you more information about where the price is headed this is the first topic about angle analysis and the length is also important so when you have a short movement followed by a long movement most likely the strength of the market is still going up and now let's take at the other side of the other movement because we look at the movement going up now we look at the movement going down to compare them so the first let's say for example the first movement going down is this one it's quite strong the angle is quite steep but just after there is a, f a little movement and it is not able to break the previous low that is here and the price stop here the angle is less steep than the previous one and the next movement going down is more little even and the price finish higher than the previous one so when you see this kind of information this is a perfect example the length of the movement is less big and less big the angle is less steep here and uh, well quite steep here but so much little that it has no significance and after what happened is the price go in the upside direction so this is how you take advantage of the of the angle of the movement you always compare the movement going up and the movement going down so if you have a movement going down strong followed by a movement going down weaker like this one and you have a movement going up quite steep correct and after you have a movement going up stronger this one if you see the movement going down become weaker and the movement going up become stronger this is a clear sign that the price is likely to go up so it will be a good opportunity for you to take um, a call in this trade and in forex to make a significant movement in the direction of the strength next topic we will talk about the acceleration and the deceleration so the acceleration and deceleration is something that is also called momentum when we will analyze the movement of the price we will see based on the size of the candle that there is some pattern that tell us okay now the price is making an acceleration or making a deceleration so you have to zoom out a little of your of your chart to get a little idea because it's a little subjective as you can see this movement start from this one from here start with quite big candle going down and after a little blue so it stop and this is what we call the beginning of deceleration and after you have candle with lower body and weak so end decision and the price decelerate and after this deceleration what happened is a big blue candle that create a reversal so we don't talk about the specific size of the candle what we talk is about the combination of all of them to creating an acceleration or a deceleration on the other end this is a typical example of a climax 
the price start with hesitation and accelerate accelerate so much so much so much vertical and after reject very widely let's find another example of a climax and this is also a beautiful one so the price start little accelerate so much so much and after reject widely another one for the road yeah we have a double here again price start with little movement and decision and accelerate so much that it reverses and same so much big candle and reversion also those are typical example of a specific climax so i will explain you the candlestick this way so to make it short for this lesson because i will focus only with what is the most important we have our resistance which is exactly right here so what we have exactly here it's a deceleration so it's a very good sign if we already analyze it with the deceleration process the price start to go very steeply up and what you can see is it breaks our resistance here and after it decelerates and now we have our resistance here and it is likely to take a put at this level for a forex trade that will make significant movement so we have the first sign which is the deceleration which is very likely that the price will bounce going down and the second sign that we will search is an inversion of the power of the market and this inversion will be told to us by the candlestick so the most important of all the candlestick is the engulfing candle this candle is this white candle in the middle right here is an engulfing candle and this tell us okay now i touch this resistance right here and i want to go down so what are the elements that this white candle tell us that is very clear that it wants to go up to go down sorry so first we have a blue candle correct body size and i will plot another tick, tick, bottom because this is what we will focus we will focus at the top and the bottom of the candles that touch the resistance so our blue candle the bottom of the candle is right here and the top of the candle is here the next candle has been able to break up upstairs but has been rejected very widely and now the body go in the downside direction of this white candle here and the body is able to close below the extreme bottom of the previous candle and this is what we call an engulfing candle i mean the, the top and the bottom of the candle engulf totally the previous candle right here and it is able to close below the lower point of this candle so when this happen it tells us now the market has more power going down and we can take a trade and enter in forex in this kind of way to uh, a trade in the downside direction when we have a strong level as this resistance for example and you can see it very clearly for this one this one is also an engulfing candle well, certainly during the news because it's a very good one very big one so much extreme and you have the blue candles that try to go up that finish here extreme bottom extreme top so the top is broken but it is not what we what interest us which which is important for us is this point that has been broken very widely by this candlestick and this candlestick finish exactly here so what we do when we are here we can take a trade at this level for a put in the downside direction and since in forex we don't have a limit of time we can take advantage or when we will hit the next uh, support that might be this yellow line maybe a little upper something like that so it's still we are still in profit with that and if we have missed this uh, this possibility to be in profit and we are the market who comes up again we still have the opportunity because the market comes back to us here and we can be aware of that that the market has power to go down with this white candle when it touches the resistance so this is some basis that can help you to trade better on the forex trade now so same applies for example right here you see we have very strong resistance here but the candle the white here and the white here 
are not very strong enough to, to tell us that there is an inversion in the in the power of the market. But when you have this doji, this blue candle with a big wick going up, after this one you have a white candle which is able to break the low and close at the extreme bottom of the candle and the next candle break it very widely. So now we have a clear indication that the power of the market is not going up anymore but it is going down. And this is what we want to what we want to take. So if you're a little more risky, you can take this candle here and go for a downside direction. But if you are not, you can take at the end of this candle and you will wait a more significant movement going down, knowing that your target should be nearly around this support zone right here, maybe a little above. If we zoom out a little, maybe a little like that. This is our next support zone where the market reacted correctly in the past. So it can be our first target. So if we enter right here, our target for the, to take profit can be here. And it's like 8,000 micro pips, so it's already a good move. Just an indication, if you, if you take a trade going in the downside direction using only the support and resistance, you will place, for example, your stop loss if you take a put right here. Okay you will place your stop loss a little above your resistance right here my yellow line is my stop loss and your target profit will be your blue line here so i will plot a yellow yellow line but this this will be your target actually and the volume you will place on one single trade will be the difference between your entry point for example here to here so it is 3000 uh, micro pips 389 pips because we are on the daily chart so this was the first part, how you trade support and resistance in a forex uh, strategy. Now we will learn about how to, to define a trend and the strategy will be oriented toward trend following. So in price action, what defines the trend is the new low and the new high. For example, what tells us that this movement from here maybe a little more, from here, to here, to here, to here, again, and again, and again. So what tells us that we are in a downtrend is the formation of new low and new lower low in a downtrend and new higher low. So the previous high should be lower the one compared the other. So we have one high here, the next high is below, so it's a good sign of a downtrend. Now if we have the lower point here and the next low is lower, we have the confirmation that this is downtrend. So it goes down with the top of the movement and it goes down with the bottom of the movement. So this is how in price action we define a trend and this is the most fast and accurate way to do it by professional about price action trading. We don't define trend with a moving average and all that. The most accurate way is really this way and it's the most simple. If you have a movement going, going up, going down, going up and going down and the previous low is here, the new low is higher than the previous, and the new high is higher than the previous, you are in an uptrend. If you have the same in, the, in this direction, so it means the previous low is higher than the new low, so you go in the downside direction with the low, and the new high is lower than the previous high, it goes also in the downside direction. This is a confirmation of the downtrend. You don't need anything more than that. And this is the most efficient. So when you want to follow a trend on Forex, you will wait, for example, to see a difference between that. So focusing on trend, as you can see, the price go down, go down, go down and the previous low here, the new low here, the new low here, so until here it's okay, 
And now here at this specific level, we have a problem. The new law is not lower than the previous law. So to make it clear, this is a new law. It is higher or at the same level. And in this case, it's higher, but it can be at the same level. So we have something that is not right exactly, exactly here. And if we analyze the angle, we see some deceleration of the price and we see some weakness going down. So now we see the price is not really likely to go down. So what will confirm us that the price will go in an uptrend will be that the previous high, which is here, would be broken by a new higher high which is exactly what happened exactly here. So from this specific point, the down from this point, the downside movement transform into an upside movement. Especially when after that you have another confirmation which is a new low which is higher than the previous low. So now it's clear the price is going in the upside direction. So this is how we will take advantage of the market in Forex. And this is what we will trade and this is the core of the strategy. First, you have to learn really in this very simple way how to find the trend. So the first thing you have to do is to define the trend. So you look at the previous low and the previous high and you see what, what, what's happening. <clears throat> and so for example in this specific one so we have a downtrend and here we have a breaking of our downtrend exactly here. So at this specific time we will enter in a trade in the upside direction. And as you can see, if we enter exactly here, knowing the signs that tell us the market with this new low higher than the previous. So when this happens, the market creates a new low higher than the previous one. We have a clear indication that the market is turning around. And if we have a new high forming, this will be where we will enter our trade for a call going long in Forex to make profit on this direction. So when we enter here, for example, let's say we exit our position here, it will be something like 1,400 pips or 14,000 micro pips. It is very, very huge. So this is what we will try to get. And um, we will analyze it on one hour chart because you will have more probabilities than in on the daily chart. But on daily chart, the movement that you can catch is a very huge movement just based on this simple fact. So, so to clarify a little, as we just see what define a downtrend is a new low lower than the previous one and a new high lower also than the previous one. So lower, low, lower, high. Now we will get ready when we will see a sign that the downtrend has a little problem in this specific case right here. Now we have a new low that is at the same level or a little above the previous low. This is at this exact moment right here that we will say if the price break the previous high now this will be a reversal and an uptrend. So when we are here this is when we will prepare our pending order and this blue line ready to go long or to make a call if you come from binary option. That's what I wanted to clarify.
When you have one sign that the downtrend doesn't create any more lower low or lower high, the first sign is the point where you will place your pending order for the strategy. Because the pending order will be triggered only if the market creates a new high higher than the previous, because we are in a downtrend. So you don't need to, to wait. Just what you need to do is to be alert to the first sign that the downtrend has a weakness going down. So now that you know how to define the trend and how you will place your trade, we will learn exactly what will define where you will put your stop loss and where you will put your target profit. So, as you may know, in Forex, you will enter, for example, at this level. You can place your target profit for example at this level and you will place your stop loss to protect your position let's say at this level and the distance between your entry which is the blue line and the red line which is your stop loss will be the money that you put at risk because this will be the money that you might lose if it trigger your stop loss will be your risk and the distance between your entry point and the target will be your reward. It means it is the potential money that you can win. The difference with binary is in Forex, your risk can be, for example, you put uh, $10 and your reward will be like two times the risks that you put. So it will be something like uh, 20 so if you put $10 at risk, if your trade goes in the right direction correctly, you can win $20. So it means doing so, you can lose two trades out of three and you will still be break even. This is the beauty of Forex, actually. And when you follow the trend, something like that, or like what I teach you today, you will be able to have trades that will have a reward 1.5, sometimes two times what you will put at risk. And this is the very goal and the very beautiful thing about this strategy. So to know exactly where you will take your profit and where you will put your stop, we will use the Fibonacci level. First, I will teach you how to place the Fibonacci level. Fibonacci are specific, beautiful number found by Fibonacci, Mr. Fibonacci, a very famous mathematician. And we use this number of Fibonacci to find specific level where the price is likely to turn, to reverse a little at a specific level. It's very important and a lot of traders use them and that is why those level works pretty well. And in Forex we will use this level to set our target most of the time and also our stop loss. And this is how we will use it today. So if you are in a downtrend you will put your Fibonacci level from the previous high, let's say for example this doesn't exist, so we are in a downtrend still and we will plot our Fibonacci from the extreme last high until the extreme lower point which is right here and we will not so much focus in the retracement but we will focus on the expansion the expansion are the levels that are above our our retracement. Retracements mean inside. It means this movement is a genuine movement, a movement very strong going in one direction and the, the level inside are used to find some reversal point inside this last movement. Us, we will use this retracement only for the stop loss and we will use the expansion which is above 100% because every line is um, telling you a specific percent from the previous last big movement. It can be in the downside direction in a downtrend or in an upside direction in an uptrend. And for example, when we know that the price uh, go down at this specific level, we expect the price to continue in the same direction. But when we have a clear sign that the downtrend is going to be a, to, to transform to a reversal trend and going up again, we will place our Fibonacci <coughs> I will tac, tac, put it a little 
later on because this will be exactly where we will want to put it yeah so we'll zoom in yeah more in detail so this will be our last movement when we see that we have a new a new movement here sorry higher than the previous high and we will want to enter the, the trade remember if the price is able to break the previous high which is exactly here so we will want to go long in our position when the price will break this level and this is exactly what happened at this specific moment <clears throat> so when we will enter the trade at this specific moment we will put our stop loss below the last low which is here so our stop loss will be exactly here so this will be our stop loss and to define our target profit we will use the first line which is 161.8 and I will put it in blue and this is how we will use the Fibonacci level the Fibonacci will help us to put our stop loss at the zero level or little below and our first target profit will be at the 1.61 Fibonacci level and look exactly what happened at this level it act like a resistance and the price bounced back exactly here so this level is something that works on the real time then our second target because we will use two targets will be at the 261 exactly here and now we will zoom out a little and we will see what happened at this level and as you can see this level react also exactly as a new resistance exactly here and doing so we would have win both trades so no doubt about it and we will have win for example on this one we would have win 6000 micro pips and on the first one with the first target we would have win 2500 micro pips so the way to trade this strategy is to put always or to, to split actually our trade in two trades the first trade will, will have the first target profit which is 161 Fibonacci which react very well all the time as a very good support and resistance level so most likely the price will touch it and the other half of our trade will finish at the 2061.8 for the 423 you need to be a little more advanced to boost another trade finishing at this level but as you can see exactly at this level it act exactly at the resistance exactly here so it's a very very powerful level so the strategy is about that actually it's very very simple you define where goes the trend going down and going up and when you see a sign of weakness in the price action first then you just confirm with the previous low and previous high and when you see it create a new high higher than the previous high when you are in a downtrend this is a clear sign that now the price would go in the upside direction so you place a pending order but the pending order will not be placed when you will be here the pending order will be placed when you will know that the price make a new low that is higher than the previous low which is also a reversal pattern so to make things a little practical your entry point will be the yellow line when it will break right here and the blue are my, my two targets and the red is my stop loss so first first trade the one that will finish at the first blue line here which is my 161 Fibonacci you plot remember to find this line your Fibonacci from the last top to the last bottom in a downtrend and it gives you exactly where will be those line and if you have any question you can ask me anytime as you can see my horizontal line gives me the exact price so I will right click on my chart I will go on trading and I will go on new order then I will not select market execution I will select pending order since my price is here this will be a buy stop so I select here a buy stop uh, don't worry the software will tell you 
if you select the buy limit aside of buy stop and it's not the right thing to do, it will not uh, work. It will tell you invalid uh, TP and SL, so it's a target profit and stop loss. It's not really the, the fault, but it will not work. So you will have to re-enter it until it's correct. So why I do that? Because I want to show you the exact way to do it. So it will be a buy stop, because remember our price is exactly here. So our entry point will be 104.374, our stop loss will be 99.615, and our first target will be 107.004. So this will be our first order. Now let's look at the volume. So for the sake of the example, I place a fake order, and you will see when you place your cursor to the stop loss, you will have the value that you might lose. And this is where you will fine tune the amount of volumes that you will place to control the money that you will risk on every single trade. Let's say I want to make a buy stop. My entry price will be 1.11640. The stop loss will be 1.1137. So, as you can see, I selected as a volume 0 0.05 so this is the volume I place and when I place this volume I go in my stop loss right here and it will tell me profit minus $13.50 so if my account is let's say $1000 I want to put at risk only 2% of my account for each trade and since in this setup I will place two trades I will split it in two. So every trade I want to put only 1% and 1% of $1,000 it is $10. So my risk for this trade should be a little less than 0 0.05 volume. So I will try to make a 0.04. I delete my order. So left click, delete. And I will place a new one with the same entry, same stop loss, but with a different volume. So now my volume is 0 0.04 and I place it successfully. And now if I go to my stop loss, my amount that I put at risk is $10.80. We are not in some cent, but still this is the right way to do because it's a little complicated to compute the right amount so you will just play with the volume until you reach the amount that you want to put at risk on a regular account if you select as a volume one which means you will select one lot more or less it means every pip will worth one dollar that's why we modify the volume so in this specific case we have a difference between our entry and our stop loss of 4,000, no, 470 pips, 4,700 micro pips. So it means if we select the volume as one lot here, every pips will worth around one dollar. So it means I will put myself in risk of uh, 47, 470 dollar. This is not what I want to do. If you have an account of $100, you want to put $2 maximum at risk in this trade. And since you will place two trades, at risk you will want to place only $1. Respecting your size can lead you to a lot of profit on the long run and to achieve huge numbers. Since we will split our trade, we will put one trade that will win at the first blue and one trade that will win at the second blue, we put at risk the same stop loss, so it will be $1. And putting one dollar at risk, the first trade you will win maybe 80 cents, and the second trade you will win uh, maybe around two dollars, something like that. So overall, you will win la you will win around 150 percent of what you risk, which is already good. And what is even better than that is, for example, at first you place two orders, each one with one person at risk, and when it will have touched the first target which is exactly here you will have still your Fibonacci from here to here and you will move your stop loss 
So the first stop loss is gone. Your first target, you are already in the money for this one. And you will move this stop loss from the last bottom, where it was at security, to the middle and the 50% line, which is exactly here. So now, and your target is still the second blue line, and this one is gone. This trade is already in profit, so now you have, or you have only one trade that is running. And when this trade is running, you have only at risk, like for example, if you place one dollar, you will have only half of one dollar, so it will be only 50 cents that you will risk. And your first target is met here, and now the price continues to go up, and you risk only 50 cents, and the reward will be, for example, two dollar, 0.5, something like that. So your risk will be one, and your reward on this specific trade will be three times what you risk on the second trade with the second target profit of this specific trade. So, now, overall, you know how to plot your Fibonacci to guide you to find your target profit, how to put your stop loss, how to find the trend, and so on and so forth. So if I give you a global overview of the strategy, to make it quite simple, we define our support and resistance on the daily chart. And we wait our price to go to the support, for example, or to go to the resistance. And this is where we will analyze the strategy about the new high and new low. So let's say it goes in the upside direction, doing this kind of movement. New high higher than the previous. And after we have one higher that touch the resistance and the, the next low is still higher than the previous one and it come back to bounce and doesn't succeed to touch it again. So now we have two high that are at the same level confluent with a resistance area. And this is where we will place our order for a put. So going short in Forex in the downside direction with the pending order when the price will break exactly here, this level. So we place our pending order when we are at this level here confluent with a strong resistance on the daily chart. This is our best opportunity. And when we are there, when we have the power of this resistance to reject the price significantly, additional to the trend following system, analyzing the low and the previous high, you place your trade at this moment and you go for the target of 161 and 261 Fibonacci right here, right now. That is the overview, the clear overview. And now if we take the example in the other direction, still our bottom, still our top, the price come back down. Touch. Create still a new low, but touch is not able to retouch again. So now we have a new low that is higher than the previous one, so it is contradicting our downtrend. And it is also confluent with the support area that is here, that will give trend to our setup. And when we are here, at this specific moment, right here, we will place our pending order to go long or to make a call when the price will be able to break this level. This will be our setup confirmed by the support zone on the daily chart that will give strength to the pattern. And doing so, we place our first target profit will be 161 and our second target profit 261. 
this is the way to apply the strategy if we want to make a call or to go long in Forex. I hope it's clear for you. So why did I start it with the daily chart? Because the daily chart I want you to put your support and resistance. Because this support and resistance will be maybe a little one zone like here. Will be powerful and will reject the price in the other direction. What you can see now it's on the daily chart it's a global uptrend. So most likely what you will expect if it goes near this zone is the price to bounce up and to continue to go up. Because you will assume uh, a trend will continue until you see a clear sign that it's not anymore an uptrend but it becomes to be a downtrend. But on this specific movement going up, the previous low is here and it has not been broken already and it will take time because it will, because it, before it will break. So you have still some time before it will really transform and it's not yet done. So after you have this one, but it's more a pullback because as you can see, the price take a lot of distance to make halfway that what the price has been able to make up. So still the power of this chart is still going up. And if we look at the candlestick, tack, let's see at the end, the candlestick here is very clear that the price is continuing to go up. So for the pre precise moment, the sentiment of the candle is going up. So now we are in a downtrend in this specific moment on the shorter respiration. And this was a new high, the new high is lower, the previous low is lower. Maybe right now, if the price continues to go up for some time, we have a new low that is higher than the previous one. Previous low, new low. So this is can be a good example. So for example, we can place a pending order right now to enter the trade for a call if the price is able to break the previous high. And knowing that on if we zoom a little out it's still an uptrend, it can be a good trade to take it in this way. Especially when we see this big blue candle right here. So now we will place a pending order doing so. And this is how works the strategy. I conceal you to start with the one hour chart. Don't go below because it will be uh, complicated to place your pending order below. The broker will not permit you to place order uh, so much close to where is the price. But you can analyze from the one hour chart and it can be a good way to take advantage of it. So I think I will make uh, this kind of webinar uh, maybe once a month and I will make it uh, available for everyone for $5. Uh, the next uh, webinar that I will make will be about the news, still about Forex and something about low, low risk. It is important that you all understand the strategy and if you have any question you can ask me uh, in the chat room or in private, whatever you feel like, you are free to ask. I hope you enjoy. Bye!